Hello everyone and welcome to this course. The name of this course is Technology for Everyone. As you know, it's really hard to be up to date with this new world, new technologies and to keep up with this everyday changing digital world, especially with this AI world. So understanding the new technologies give you a competitive advantage give you more power than others and also make more opportunities to you so there are some questions like what is exactly the internet how does it work and what opportunities can you find online these are the questions that you will understand well enough throughout this course so what is the content of this course what exactly this course consists of so it has two main section let's dive in to see what's happening throughout this course so this is a outline video for this course in this video we're gonna see titles and subtitle of this course the first section of this course is about how to think like a coder and the first subtitle of this section is human versus machines in this section we will compare the human abilities and machine abilities and the advantage and disadvantage of the machines so the next section is about thinking like a machine how we as humans can think like a machine the next section is about how to think like a coder like a programming developer web developer the people who have the ability to code so the second section of this course is about a hyper connected world so it's basically about the internet we're gonna talk about in the first section about the internet the next section about the web what is the web what is the internet and what is the difference between them is it uh, really the web and the internet the same or not we're gonna compare them together and the third section is about web technologies and jobs and how we can find jobs with the ability of coding ability of knowing technologies and that was the outline of this mini course so this course will briefly talk about the new technologies new world about the internet artificial intelligence in this video we're going to talk about the difference between human beings and machines we will compare them together so first of all let's check the overview of this video so in this video we're going to talk about the digital world and what is the digital world a superpower and what is this superpower we're going to talk about it the next one is human versus machines humans computers and what is human computers so tiny simple operations electronic computers we're going to talk about it and the last one we're going to talk about automation so let's dive in the digital world the digital world we live in wouldn't be possible without computers this is obvious that without computers we cannot do anything and this is a crucial thing to our digital world from smartphones to websites and outer space exploration they all need the computers they all need the machines so people who can control and create things on computers have a competitive advantages this is so obvious the people who have the ability to work with computers with robots with machines they have more power than others what most people don't know is that everyone can learn to code and make most of the technology around them you know most of people think that they cannot learn the programming language and the coding language is so hard they don't have this ability they don't have this opportunity to learn so this is a wrong belief everyone can learn programming languages and work with machines if you're aiming to be future proof if you want to be the part of the future this is the course for you so the next section is about a superpower. So let's check. What is the superpower? Coding is the ability to communicate with the machines and give them instructions to complete the task. If you know how to code, how to work with computer, how to work with programming languages, this is a superpower for you. This is a advantage for you that most of people don't have these advantages. 
The next section is about humans versus machines. Humans and machines have different but complementary abilities. Obviously, human beings have the abilities that don't have the machine, and on the other hand, machines have the abilities that we don't have. What comes naturally to people can be hard for machines, at least for now, maybe for future, it will be easy as the AI improves. And what's straightforward for machines remains virtually impossible for people. The next section is about humans' computers. The first computers were humans sitting at tables and doing lots of maths by hands, filling whole books with calculation. Rooms full of human computers, largely women, powered everything from astronomy to war and the race into space. Some of them became the first coders in history. Tiny simple operations. Let's see what is the tiny simple operations. Even the most complex mathematical formula can be broken down into hundreds of tiny simple math calculations. It's just take a while to do that. Computers were invented to do mathematical calculations that were previously completed by humans. Electronic computers. That went off electronics made it possible for math calculations to be done by electronic circuits. Before the electronics, human being was doing math calculations. And after that, thanks to the electronics, it makes the work easier. Modern tasks like video streaming, online game, and map navigation can all be broken down into thousands of basic calculations. The modern computer doesn't differ much from the earlier one with regard to its basic function. The difference is that modern computers are smaller and can perform the basic operations much faster. The earlier computers were so big and they didn't have much space and a lot of potential and they were much slower than today's computers. So let's see what is the next slide. Yeah, this is the last slide that is talking about automation. As computers get cheaper and more powerful, Machines will continue to replace humans in the workplace. Many jobs are expected to be lost due to automation. In the future, lots of jobs will be replaced by machines and machines will do the human being's job. So it has its advantages and its disadvantages. Understanding how computers work and being able to code will give you a competitive advantage and make you future-proof make you as part of future. So this is the lesson takeaways. This is the summary of this video. In this video, we have talked that the first computers were actually humans doing tiny, simple calculations. The next subject that we have learned is that the electronic computer was invented to replace humans with simple calculations. The last point was that modern computers can perform more complex tasks now because this can be broken down into lots of tiny simple calculations. So in the next lesson, you'll think from a computer's perspective to understand how they work better. You'll get in touch with your inner robot. In the previous video, we have talked about the human and machines. We compared them together. We've talked about the ability of each of them. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the how to think like a machine. So let's check the overview of this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the computational thinking. We're going to talk about tiny switches and binary code, autonomous decision, and logical operators. So the first subject is computational thinking. In the previous lesson, we've learned that computers are really good at performing tiny, simple operations very fast. Complex modern tasks like video streaming or online banking transactions can be broken down into these simple calculations. In this lesson, we'll learn how to think like a computer to bring you one step closer to becoming a human-machine hybrid. So, tiny switches. What is the tiny switches? Electronic circuits inside computers encode information, encapsulate the information in millions of tiny switches. The state of this switches is on or off. So here, this switch is on and this switch is here off. 
So there is tons of switches that can be on or off, and according to information, the state of these switches will change. These switches can be in two different states or position, on or off. By turning switches on and off, we change the information stored in a computer. So being on or off makes changes on the information which are stored in a computer. The next subject is binary code. Computers use binary code to represent information. Binary means that there are only two possibilities for the state of a switch. To make things simpler, numbers are used to represent the off or on state of a switch. So here, as you can see, this switch is on and the number is 1. Here, this switch is off and the number is 0. And also here, this switch is off and the number is 0. And here, the switch is on and the number is 1. So basically, if the switch is on, the number is 1. And if the switch is off, the number is 0. Yeah. Information like numbers, text, characters, images, and videos can all be represented by binary code. It's like a language which basically has two letters. It's like speaking in a language that only has two phonemes. For instance, letter capital A is in binary 01000001. Our character at sign is this number in binary. So, you don't need to understand binary code to become a coder. And the next topic is about autonomous decisions. Electronic circuits can perform billions of tiny operations very fast. Besides simple addition, subtraction, and multiplication, computers can also perform comparison operations. Comparison operations are needed for machines to make autonomous decisions. There are only two possibilities as the result of a comparison operation. True or false, which means that true is 1, false is 0. Let's have a closer look at some comparison operators with some examples. Is 5 less than 9? If this statement is true, the answer will be true, or the answer is 1 in binary. And if this answer is false, the answer will be false in logical operators, or will be 0 in the binary code. So we write it like this, 5 is less than 9, is equal to true. So this statement is true. And is 5 greater than 9? We write it like this, 5 greater than 9. This statement is false. So we write false, or in binary we write 0. True and false values can be stored as on or off states of the switches. True is equivalent to 1, and false is equivalent to 0. So let's check the logical operators. Logical operators are another type of tiny calculations that machines can do faster and more accurately than humans. Logical operations are needed for machines to evaluate different scenarios. The end logical operation takes the state of two switches, A and B, and resolves C in true only when both inputs are true at the same time. For example, here, we have two inputs, input A and input B. The input A and B both are false, so the output C will be false. Here, the input A is false and the input B is true, so also here the output C will be false. Why? Because one of them is false. So here, A is true and B is false, and also here it returns false value, and the first state a is true, B is also true, and it returns a true value, or true output. So, in end logical operator, both inputs should be true, if it returns true. And the other three states, it will return a false value. The or logical operation takes two inputs, A and B, and results C in true, when at least one of the inputs is true. Here, the A is false, B is also false, so it results false, because both of them are false. Here, A is false, B is true, and it returns true, because the condition was that at least one of them should be true. Here, it is true, B is true here, and it returns a true value. And here, A is true, and B is false, also it returns a true value. And the first state, 
A and B, both of them are true, and obviously the result will be true. So the OR operation is different than AND operation. In AND operator, should be both of the inputs true in order to generate a true output. But in OR operator, if one of the outputs is true, it will generate a true value. And if both of them are false, it will generate a false value. So this is the end of this video. Let's check the list and takeaways. In this video, we have talked that computers store and operate with information in the form of zeros and ones. This is known as binary code. And the second topic that we have talked about is that computers can perform comparison and logical operations very fast and accurately. This helps machines make autonomous decisions. And the last one is that true and false values from comparison and logical operations can be stored as ones and zeros. In the previous video, we have talked about how to think like a machine. In this video, we're going to talk about how to think like a coder. So let's see the overview of this video. The first topic is about human-machine communication. And the next one is algorithm. And the third one is programming languages. And the next one is general purpose versus domain specific. We have talked about it, which programming language are general purpose and which are the main specific and evolution of programming languages. And the last one is programming in three steps. So let's get it started. Human machine communication. Humans give instructions to machines using code. It's called code because it's written in a language that machines can understand. Compared to human human languages, human machine languages or programming languages are simpler since they are made of fewer words. So learning a programming language is much more easier than learning a second language, for example, learning Japanese, Chinese, Germanese, or something like that. Why? Because programming language has less and fewer words than other languages. So let's talk about algorithm. Machines can complete tasks for us but first, they need to know how. The best way to break a task down for a machine is with an algorithm. An algorithm is a set of steps that precisely describe how to complete a task, just like a cooking recipe. For an algorithm to be followed without confusion or errors, two conditions are needed. The first one, every step must be clear to execute the algorithm, and the second one is the steps must produce predictable outcomes based on the same inputs. So the next topic is about programming languages. Algorithms are translated into code using programming languages. Python is a popular, versatile, and simple programming language, but it's not the only one. There are over 100 different programming languages. As you can see, the name of some of them here, PHP, C Sharp, JS, jQuery, Java, C, HTML, Python, CSS, Go, SQL, C++, Kotlin, Ruby, and tons of other programming languages. So, we have two types of programming language, general purpose and domain specific. Some programming language, for example, Python, is a general purpose programming language, which means that you can do anything with that programming language. And other languages, for example, HTML is a domain specific or CSS. They are the domain specific, which means that you can only work with them in a specific area. For example, HTML and CSS, they are just for web developing. So programming languages are classified into general purpose and domain specific. General purpose language work in a wide variety of applications domain across the multitude of hardware configuration and operating systems. For example, Python, C++, Java, and other languages, they are general purpose language. Domain specific languages are used in a particular domain in a system. While these languages can't address all problems, they solve those which were designed for better than general purpose language. It means that HTML and CSS is much more better for web developing than Python language, which means that despite we can develop a web with Python language, this is much more easier, much more faster and better developing a web with HTML and CSS. So these two languages are specifically designed for developing a web. So for example, HTML and SQL, they are the domain specific programming languages.
evolution of programming languages, the evolution of programming languages goes hand in hand with the rapid development of modern computers. New languages are popping up every day. So programming and coding has three main steps, writing the code, running the code, and debugging. Debugging means finding the errors and fix them, and also write the code and run and fix them. Regardless of which programming language you use, programming concepts and constructs are transferable. Once you know how to code in one language, you'll be able to quickly pick up another one. Programming always involves these three steps. First one, writing the code, executing or running the program, and the last one is fixing the error, also known as debugging. We have that here. So in this video, we have talked about that humans break down complex tasks for machines. Algorithm consists of clear and precise steps to complete a task. And the last one, we have talked about that programming languages are needed to translate the steps in a complex task into instructions that a machine can follow. In the previous video, we have talked about how to think like a coder, how to think like a programmer. So in this video, we're going to talk about the internet. So first of all, let's see the overview of this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the internet revolution, information delivery, connection types, and fast and reliable. So let's dive in. The first topic is about the internet revolution. For most of us, it's very hard to imagine a world without the internet. The internet has revolutionized how humans communicate and connect with each other and has transformed the way we do business and socialize. Information delivery, how the information ships throughout the network. Think of the internet like a postal service, but instead of boxes and envelopes, it ships information. Everything that gets sent over the internet is information in different formats, from text message to video and your favorite song. Billions of devices are connected in the internet through networks in order to exchange information and communicate with each other. So basically, we have three main connection types. The networks linking billions of devices are made of three types of physical connection. The first one is copper cables and wires. Information travels in the form of electrical signals. The second one is wireless connection. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 4G, and 5G. In this type of connection, information travels in the form of the radio waves. And the third one is fiber optics cables. In this type, information travels in the form of light. So, how does a picture, email, or video travels across the world in a fraction of a second? Information that is sent through the internet gets broken down and wrapped into information packets. Information packets travel through the internet at a very high speed with minimal errors. The whole system is highly reliable and incredibly fast. So, in this video, we have talked about that the internet is a communication system, devices on the internet exchange information, and lastly, information gets chunked into packets that travel at a high speed through a network of physical connection. In the previous video, we have talked about the web. In this video, we're going to talk about the internet. So first of all, let's see the overview of this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the World Wide Web, largest application, hypertext links, the first prototype, web evolution, web pages, websites, the web server, client and server, HTTP, and the last one, we're going to talk about the web browsers. So let's get started. The first topic is about World Wide Web. So what is the World Wide Web? The World Wide Web, or simply the web, puts information at our fingerprint and is used by millions of people every day. You already know that almost everything is possible on the web, from checking the weather, to managing your finance, to shopping from anywhere at any time. But how exactly 
Is all of this possible? In this lesson, we'll explore the inner working of the web. So, the largest application. When the internet and the web are not the same things, the two terms are often used interchangeably. The web is the largest application on the internet. The web is made of special documents that display information on your device screen. As you can see here, this large blue area is the internet and this white area is the web. So basically the web and the internet are not the same. So the web is an application inside the internet. So hypertext links, the web is a system within the internet that enables users to search for information. Web pages make the world wide web. These pages connect to each other through hypertext links or hyperlink. The hypertext links enable users to search information on the web by moving from one page to another. Web pages are hypertext documents. This means that they contain hypertext links or hyperlink to connect to other pages. So here, they are the pages of a web. Basically, a web has lots of pages and these pages are connected to each other with hyperlink. So the web was originally designed and developed at the European Organization for Nuclear Research in the 19th. The first prototype enabled scientists to share information between different universities and research institutes around the world. So the web has evolved considerably since it was invented at CA. European, or European Organization Nuclear Research. Web 1.0, the read-only web, the user can only read information. No interaction or design elements. And the second version of the web is Web 2.0, the read and write web. The user can access and produce content. The web became social with applications like YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And the third version of the web is 3.0, the read, write, execute web, a new iteration of the web. Computers can interrupt information like humans via artificial intelligence. So let's talk about the web pages. A web page is a hypertext document. Web pages include information in the form of text, image, videos, and other type of media. Every web page has a unique web address or URL Universal Research Locator. This URL points to IP address on the internet where the information is stored and can be found. Hypertext links or hyperlinks point to the URL of the related web page you want to jump to. So what is the website? What is the difference between web page and websites? A website is a family of multiple web pages. Web page under the same site share the same domain name, the same way you share a last name with your family. So basically we have lots of pages inside a category named website and this page is named web page. A domain name is the unique and easy to remember name that appears after the at sign in email address and after www dot in web addresses. A domain name is associated with a physical IP address that identifies the location where that information for the site is stored. So what is web server? If there is a vast amount of information on the web, there is no way your device has enough memory to store every one of the millions of documents that make up the web. So where does all this information live? Web servers are computers that are always connected to the internet. They are specially designed to store and share information. Clients and servers. Servers are the provider of the information that you can find on the web. Just like a waiter serves your order in a restaurant. Servers take orders from other devices that connected to the internet to consume information. Clients are devices that place orders for information on the web, like what's the weather like today. The smartphones, tablets, and laptops, among other devices, are clients that request information through the web. So what is the HTTP? 
clients and servers on the web need to communicate to each other and they use a specific language for that and HTTP is that language. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and allows requests from the clients and responses from the servers to be understood. So information on the web flows from servers to clients in the form of encoded messages that are sent through the network. The web browser acts as our translator. With a web browser, you don't need to know any special computer language to surface web. The web browser is a software application that provides a graphic interface for accessing the web. So in this lesson, we have talked that the web is the largest application on the internet. So the web and the internet, they are not the same. They are different. Internet is greater than web. Information on the web lives in servers that are always listening for requests from clients. And the last point that we have talked is that the web browser acts as a translator. It allows user to surface the web without understanding any computer's languages. In this video, we're going to talk about web technologies and jobs. So first of all, let's see the overview of this video. First section, we're going to talk about the internet industry, front end versus back end, the technologies of the World Wide Web. The next one is front end designer, back end developer, the full stack developer, network engineer, cybersecurity experts, and the last one is digital marketing. So let's dive in. The internet industry. Have you ever wondered how there are so many products and services on the internet? Or why there are so many different rules in the tech industry? For that matter, what is the difference between a front-end and a back-end developer? In this lesson, you'll learn about the core technologies that keep the internet running and the jobs that make it all happen. Front-end versus back-end. Building a website involves two categories of tasks, front-end and back-end. What is the front-end? What users see and interact with. This is the front-end. Everything that's displayed on the screen is front-end. Buttons, menus, pages, links, graphics, and other things. Front-end is another way of saying client-side. And what is the back-end? Information, requests, servers, and database. They are the backing. Backing is another way of saying server side. So, the technologies of the World Wide Web. Coders use programming languages to communicate with machines. Web pages are constructed using three core web technologies. The first one, HTML. What is the HTML? Hypertext markup language. So, what's up to that? Controls the structure of a web page. It's enhanced and modified by CSS and JS. So what is CSS? Cascading style sheets. CSS controls the presentation, format, and layouts. And what is the JS? JS is abbreviation of JavaScript. So JavaScript controls the behavior of a web page and makes it interactive. Front-end designer. Front-end designers are experts in user experience. They balance style and function, so websites are pretty engaging and useful. They design and build elements like bottom, menus, pages, links, graphics, and more. Learning HTML, CSS, and JS is a very good starting point if you want to become a front-end designer. So what is the back-end? Back-end developers are experts of the internet world, which you don't see. They work with data and write code that can find and deliver data to the front end. They focus on assembling information requested and delivering it to the front end and work largely with services and databases. Learning about PHP, JS, SQL, and a language like Python or Java or Go are a good starting point if you want to become a backend developer. So, how about a full stack developer? Can we learn both of them? They are a mythological creature that can work with both front-end and back-end technologies. These professionals are known as fully stack developers. These powerful team players have the breadth of knowledge to see the big picture. 
So they are the perfect people to suggest ways to optimize the process or remove roadblocks that might be slowing down the system. So the next topic is about network engineer. Networks need to be maintained and repaired. Network engineers keep networks running, but also expand existing networks and create new ones within businesses. Networks engineers work with both public and private networks. That can mean an airport's Wi-Fi, a school system, or a top-secret research institution. They configure devices and optimize performance. Network engineers can code in different languages. A good starting point is Python or Java. So how about cybersecurity experts? The internet would be a wilder and more dangerous place without cybersecurity professionals. Attackers can use the internet to access, change, or destroy sensitive information, exert money from users, or interrupt normal business processes. Cybersecurity experts protect devices, networks, and software from digital attacks. Java, Python, and SQL are a very good starting point if you want to dive a bit deeper into cybersecurity. So the next and the last topic is about digital marketing. Digital marketers use the internet to promote products and services. Search engine optimization experts or SEO experts know how to get more traffic from search engines like Google. They optimize websites in order to achieve higher search engine rankings. If you want to become a digital marketer and a SEO pro, a basic understanding of HTML is a must. So in this lesson, we have talked about that three core technologies make the web. First one is HTML, CSS, and the last one is JS. Tasks in the process of building a website can be classified into two categories, front-end and back-end. And the last point is that products and services on the internet exist thanks to a wide range of professionals. Coding skills give them a competitive advantage. So, as always, make the most of your time and bye for now.